Hey everyone, I'm Eric Swanson with Eric Swanson Outdoors. Welcome to Addicted Fishing. Today I'm gonna to talk about how to be successful anchor fishing on a big river system. Alrighty guys, so once we're out here looking for a good anchor spot, what we wanna look for is a good current seam, a ledge, or a point that's gonna funnel those fish down so we're gonna put our lure in front of the most fish that are swimming up the river. What you don't wanna do is just anchor out in a big flat area where the fish could be anywhere. You wanna be somewhere that's gonna funnel those fish. Another really important thing is you wanna make sure that the bottom is either really sandy or gravel. You don't wanna be anchoring on snags or stumps or things like that where you're gonna hang your gear or your anchor up in. It could also be a major safety hazard. So once we've found the spot we want to anchor, it's important to have your anchor, your chain, your ball, and your line set up with all the lines kind of strung out so you're ready and prepared to drop in a safe way. When you're anchoring, guys, you want to make sure and have two to five times the amount of rope out as the depth of the water, and that all depends on the current speed. So now that I have my anchor dropped, the current isn't quite going out hard enough yet, so I'm using my trolling motor to get us back and get my rope straight. So once we have a rope stretched out here, the next thing is to toss your anchor ball. You wanna have your anchor ball roughly 10 to 20 feet in front of your boat, so that way, when you're ready to pull it, you have enough slack line in front of your ball to where you can properly drive around the ball and have the ball suck your anchor off the bottom. Alrighty, so now that my anchor ball is about 10 or 12 feet in front of the boat, now we wanna tie our anchor rope off to the boat. Now how I like to do that is I like to do two half hitches. One and two. A key step in being successful out here anchor fishing is having the proper drift sock to keep the back of your boat straight. So what these do is they catch water, funnels it down, pulls tension on the back of your boat. So when other boats are driving up and down the river, that side wake doesn't keep pushing you back and forth and dragging your gear all over the bottom. Now that we have our anchor all set up, the first technique I wanna talk about is anchor fishing with plugs. This happens to be a Maglip 3.5 in Cowgirl and one of my favorites. This thing has caught a ton of fish for me. When you're fishing this technique, it's really important to have the right rod, reel, and line to fish it effectively. This happens to be the Okuma Guide Select Classic in a 10 foot six. Has a good soft action, really allows that plug to work well. And when the fish takes it, you have a lot of bend in the rod to keep that hook in the fish's mouth. The reel I'm running is an Okuma cold water low profile with a line counter with 50 pound braid. This braid is really good because it's very abrasion resistant and has zero stretch. So you're directly connected to that fish. There's no stretch in your line whatsoever. So for this setup, I have a top bumper bead to help protect the top eye of my rod to a sliding swivel that has my dropper on it. And the dropper is 30 inches of 15 pound mono. The reason I use 15 pound is if I get snagged on the bottom, I can break off my lead without losing my plug. Below that, I have two more bumper beads to help protect my knot to a bead chain to 40 inches of 20 pound mono. We like to use P-line, um, but you wanna use a little bit heavier to your plug so if you get your weight snagged up, you break the weight and don't lose your plug. Coming down here to my plug, they come stock with one dual lock snap. I like to add a second one on there, just helps with the movement of that plug, gives it a little bit extra freedom to swim around. So the reason I'm running a 30 inch dropper and a 40 inch leader is these maglips dive pretty well and you don't wanna to use too short of a leader or else the bill of this maglip will be digging in the dirt. And I found throughout the years that a 30 inch dropper and a 40 inch leader puts that maglip about six inches off the bottom right in the steelhead's face. So when we're anchor fishing with plugs, it's really important to add scent, be it Procure Super Gel, or my favorite are these Millennial Coon Shrimp. And I'm gonna show you guys right now how to properly wrap your maglip or plug with a coon shrimp. You wanna select the right size coon shrimp to the size of your plug. Too big of a coon shrimp will throw the movement of the plug off and it won't be as fishy. Once I've found the right size coon shrimp, I like to kind of break the whiskers off and then take this coon shrimp, it's kind of in a horseshoe bend. What I like to do is I like to wrap it around the middle of that hook. 
And what you want to do is you want to make sure that that coon shrimp is good and centered on your plug before you start wrapping it. So once you have your coon shrimp centered around the shank of that hook, you want to do a couple light wraps around the coon shrimp so that way you can still make minor adjustments. And then once you get the coon shrimp positioned where you want it, then you can start doing a few tighter wraps. And I like to kind of work my way up and then center it as I move up, kind of smush it out. The big thing here, guys, is you want to make sure that this coon shrimp is perfectly centered on the belly of this maglip. Because if it's off to one side or the other, the plug will run to that side and you definitely do not want that. And it's important to right at the top of that coon shrimp, you want to do a couple tight wraps. So that way the water won't lift that coon shrimp off your lure. Then once you have enough wraps on there to keep it in place, do a series of half hitches, two or three, to keep that coon shrimp on there. And then simply break it off. Do a quick assessment. Make sure that coon shrimp is good and centered on there. And now it's ready to fish. Alrighty guys, so now that we have our coon shrimp wrapped on our plug, the next thing we need to do is select the right size of weight for the water conditions and current. You want to use enough lead to keep your lure firmly on the bottom, but not so much that as your boat sways around a little bit, that your rod gets stuck. So you want to use just the right amount of lead to where it stays on the bottom, but not so darn much that it's just planted there. So before I send it out there, the first thing I want to do is zero my line counter. And by zeroing your line counter, once you get your plug out there and it starts to fish, if you happen to catch a fish, you wanna go back to that same number in your line counter because that fish might be running a small ditch, some sort of pocket. So you wanna make sure and always get your lure back in the same spot where it caught the last fish. So by zeroing your line counter at the top, you're gonna to be successful. So before I cast the plug out there, what I wanna do is I wanna put it in the water and look at it and make sure that it's swimming well. So once you get it out there, you want to make sure and lift your rod tip up a couple times and make sure that that weight is on the bottom and that you can feel the plug working because sometimes what will happen is you'll cast it out there and the hook will catch around the main line or around the leader and you won't be able to feel the plug working. So by lifting it up, you can feel that plug work, feel the lead hit the bottom, you know you're in the game. Next thing to do, put it in your rod holder and watch it fish. So once you have your plug fishing, and you get a takedown, you don't want to grab it right away. You want that fish to turn and start taking some line. And what I like to do is I like to run my clicker and let that fish take it for about four or five good seconds to ensure that that hook is good in place in the corner of the fish's mouth. What you don't want to do is you don't want to pick it up, set the hook, because as that fish is taking it, you'll pull back and set that hook and you could snap leaders and break fish off. The next technique I like to use is a spin and glow and a coon shrimp. For this setup, I'm using the same rod, reel, and main line as I did for the plug. So what's gonna be different about this rig is my dropper length and my leader length. The beads and the swivel are gonna stay the same. My dropper length for this setup is gonna be approximately 10 inches. So I'm using a 10 inch dropper, 15 pound. Down here, do a bead chain. Down to three feet of 20 pound to my spinning glue. The reason we're using a shorter dropper for this setup is the spin and glow has quite a bit of buoyancy. So you wanna have a shorter dropper so that spin and glow stays close to the bottom. So for steelhead, I like to use a size four spin and glow, three five millimeter beads down to a two aught hook. The reason I have these beads here is to help space the spin and glow from your coon shrimp. If your coon shrimp is too close to your spin and glow, it could affect the way the spin and glow spins. My favorite way to hook up your coon shrimp to your spin and glow is I like to take this hook, go right in the back. And you have to be really gentle with these not to break the head off. So run that hook straight down from the tail, connecting the head just like so. And on these really good millennial coon shrimp, they're firm enough to where that will stay right on your hook and it looks perfectly natural just like that. 
It's important when selecting the right size coon shrimp to the size of your spinning glow. For these steelhead smaller spinning glows, what you wanna do is select a little bit smaller coon shrimp, and that'll allow the spinning glow to still be buoyant and to spin and fish properly. If you use too big of one, it's gonna sit on the bottom, and your spinning glow is not gonna spin, and you're gonna catch bullheads and squawfish. So same as the plug, you wanna select the right size weight for the current and water conditions you're fishing. So unlike fishing with the plug, when I get a takedown running coon shrimp in a spinning glow like this, I'll let them take it a little bit and I'll grab it out of my rod holder and give it like half of a hook set. You don't want to hit a home run and break leaders off, but you want to give it a good enough hook set to where it's going to place that hook well. Alrighty guys, thanks for watching. That's how you properly anchor fish for steelhead on a big river system. Please like and subscribe. Comment below with any other future videos you want us to do. We'll see you on the river.